Good evening. Good evening. We want to welcome each one here for our Christmas Eve service. Thank you for the beautiful prelude. Uh, walking in, I kind of felt like I was walking into a wedding. And um, in a sense, we are. You know, we are the bride of Christ. We are the church. And Christ has come for us. And that's what we celebrate this evening. Um, want to remember Ken Van Zee in our prayers. Um, he'll be having surgery on Friday, so keep Ken in our prayers. Our call to worship is printed for us in our bulletin. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. The Lord has made his salvation known and has revealed his righteousness to the nations. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Ascribe to the Lord, O families of nations. And then also from Psalm 95, Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Let's sing together number 249, O Come All Ye Faithful. in these words. 
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and Jesus Christ, his only Son, through the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our God, having greeted us, let's take a moment to greet one another. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Gary. You may be seated, and our service will now go on unannounced. Good evening. On this Christmas Eve, we are gathered as God's people to celebrate again what Christ's coming means to the world. We join with Christians all over the world who are celebrating tonight. From Isaiah 9, verse 6, we read, For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and a government will be upon his shoulders. From Luke 2:10, Behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which shall come to all people. From Luke 2:14, Glory to God on the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. From Romans 5:5, 5, 5, Hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, which has been given to us. Tonight, we relight the four Advent candles and recall what the good news means. Hope, peace, love, Joy. Jesus Christ is the greatest gift. He makes all these gifts possible. So we light the Christ candle now as we think about his coming, what his coming means to each one of us. Let us pray. We thank you, God, for the gift of Jesus Christ to the whole world. We thank you that his coming makes hope, peace, love, and joy possible for every person in every nation. Encourage us to do our part to bring goodwill and peace to our families, our churches, our neighborhoods, and the world. Now let your spirit put us in touch with the living Lord through the words and music we hear today, tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen.
time we ask the children to come forward for our children's message. And if we could, could we shut the lights off in front? I brought a, a mirror along tonight, and when you look at a mirror, what you really need in order to see it is you need light, because um, if you just look at a mirror, if we could have it totally dark, you wouldn't see anything, would you? It'd be totally dark. Um, but I brought something, and Oakley, um, what's that looked like to you? Um, it looks like a huge shotgun shell. It looks like a huge shotgun shell, you're right. But it's got a button on the end. If you push that, it's a, it's a flashlight. And you shine it in the mirror, and then it reflects. See? And, yeah. And we look at ourselves, and by ourselves, we're really dark. We're sinners. But Jesus shines his light on us so that we can reflect him to a world that needs to see. And we're blessed that Jesus was willing to come into the world to be the light of the world, and people can see him when we invite him into our hearts. We're called to be the temples of Christ, and we're blessed that he's willing to shine in our hearts so that we can see. And I brought something for you this evening. You can turn the lights back on. To help you shine that light to others, I gave you candy canes Sunday morning, and I'd like you to each have a couple of them again. These are just a little different. You're welcome. Look at the candy canes, they tell the message of Jesus Christ. Um, we talked about Sunday, if you hold it this way, it looks like a shepherd's staff, and the shepherds were the first ones to witness the birth of Jesus. And we turn it that way, and it makes a J for Jesus, and Jesus gives us joy in our hearts. You look at the dark red line, 
and it's a symbol of Jesus' blood. He shed his blood for our sins. And you took it, look at the three little narrow lines, and he was scourged and beaten. He suffered for us. And when you take the red away, it's all perfectly white. He makes us white as snow. He washes us from our sin, and we can count on him. It's a hard candy, and it's rock solid. And we can count on Christ for this life and for eternity. So I want you to, to give one, and actually I'm going to ask you to each, we got enough, we're going to pass them all out, and so most people should be able to get one. You are welcome. So give them all away but one. It works out perfect. You all get four. So. Um. And we're called not only today, but every day, to share the good news of what Jesus has done for us. Thanks for coming up this evening. have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. You have enlarged the nation and increased their joy. They rejoice before you as people rejoice at the harvest, as men rejoice when dividing the plunder. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke that burdens them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's blood used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning, will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government 
and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The, the zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. Until the time when she who is in labor gives birth, and the rest of his brothers return to join the Israelites. He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord is his God. And they will, be, they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be their peace. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent star. Go by, yet in thy dark street shine the everlasting light. The hopes and fear of all the years are met in thee tonight. For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above. While mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of wandering love. O oh, morning stars together proclaim the holy birth and praise us sing to God and peace to men on earth. Luke 1, 26, 38. In the sixth month of God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings to 
Greetings. You are you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greetings this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him and give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever in his kingdom, never end. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who, she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary asked. Mary, may it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her.
Matthew 1, 18 to 25. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child, and they will give, and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and laid him, or placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. <laughs> Joy is 
Jesus, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, oh, hear the angel voices, oh, night divine. was born on oh, oh, holy night oh, night divine and by the light a face serenely be in me with glowing hearts by his cradle we stand. Oh, led by light of a star sweetly gleam, in me here came the wise men of Orient land. A king of in lowly manger in all our trials born to be our friend he was a need to our weak messes no Suddenly a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, 
Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to men on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told.
Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold and of incense and of myrrh. And having been warned in the dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. <coughs> Is this the 
John 1, verses 1 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor a human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory the glory of the one and only who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the word of the Lord. The scriptures begin, in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God, and then it says, he created the heavens and the earth, but the earth was formless and darkness covered the world. Gene, if you would shut off the lights for us. Um, We won't get it totally dark.
but just imagine darkness is all you ever knew. The world was dark. To get a better sense of it, I'd like you to close your eyes as tight as you can. Darkness covered the earth. And then it says, God made light. The lights came on. You can open your eyes. And we take light for granted. We take it that light will always be there in the morning. It's dark at night, and we take for granted that light will come. And yet, when man fell into sin, God was, man was separated from God. God had said earlier that he separated the light from the darkness. And when man fell into sin, we were separated from God and we were cast out of the garden. And our fellowship with God was broken. And yet there was a glimmer. A glimmer of light shining. For God made a promise that the seed of the woman, the, her offspring, would crush the serpent's head. And yet, us as people lived in darkness, so to speak. And God looked at the world and all that he had created, and the wickedness cried out to him, and he decided to destroy it with the flood. And yet he spared Noah and his family. And you can imagine the flood waters coming in and everything being washed away. And Noah and his family in the ark for nearly a year. And when they opened the ark, the sun was shining. The sun was shining and there was a rainbow in the sky. God's promise was shining to his people. And the people... The people continued to walk, struggling in the darkness. And it says that the Israelites went as for 400 years into captivity, into Egypt. And then God led them out, as we've been talking about. He led them out with a pillar of fire as the light. God went before them. And when the people would fall into sin, and were taken into captivity, the prophets prophesied that a light was coming into the world. The people, it says, lived in the shadow of darkness, the shadow of death. And we live in a world where we live under that darkness, do we not? For we all know that we're going to die at one point or another. But Isaiah prophesied, to you a child will be born, to you a son will be given, and he will give us light. John the Baptist has said when he was born that he came to testify to the light, to prophesy that Jesus was coming, the light of the world. He said he was not the light. But he pointed people to it. Jesus came. Jesus came, the light of the world. And people didn't recognize him. And they nailed him to a cross. And he died. But th three days later, he rose again, shattering the dark. When he died, the whole earth went dark for three hours. But when he rose, he gave light to all who would believe in him. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall have eternal life. And you and I claim that promise. We claim that we can be children of God by believing in him and yet we struggle do we not we struggle to be the people God 
made us to be. And John writes in 1 John, this is the message we have heard from him and declare to you, God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. If we came to claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with him and with one another. The blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. And then he says, anyone who claims to be in the light but hates his brother is still in the darkness. Whoever loves his brother lives in the light and there is nothing in him to make him stumble. Gene, if you would turn back on the lights, I would appreciate it. I'm struggling a bit to read. And it's kind of nice to have a little bit of light. My wife likes a dark bedroom. She says she sleeps better. I'm still a kid at heart, and I like a nightlight. Um, when I get up, I don't like to stub my toe. I like a little bit of light. And when we tr think we can walk without light, we easily hurt ourselves. A few weeks ago, I was helping my son combine, and he said he had to go away in the evening, and I said, it's fine, I'll just fill everything up. It was before we had the frost. And I was going along and found myself stuck in the mud. And I thought, well, I'll just walk back across. There was no stars, no moon out at all. But I had my cell phone. And I grabbed my cell phone and gave it a shake and the flashlight came on. I thought, all right, I'm good. Started walking across the field and I had an old cell phone. And it's one of these that I replaced this past week because at 50% it would just die on you. And there I was left in the middle of a 90 acre field walking across corn stalks, and I found myself walking in water with tennis shoes. I was struggling in the dark. And we as people can struggle when we try to walk without the light that God gives through us, through his word, through Jesus Christ. And when we look to him, when we look to him, our lives have meaning. See, we're living just in the shadow of darkness. But Jesus came to be born the light of the world that ever who believes in him can have eternal life. And in Revelations, it speaks about a place where no sun or moon are needed because the Son of God himself is the light that says in that place there's no sickness no sorrow no death and you and I can anticipate forever being in the light because Jesus came to be born for all who believe in him that we can have eternal life some of you have celebrated your Christmas parties already. Some of you are anticipating it. And when you get done, we had ours last night. It was good to get together. But you wake up in the morning, and there's a mess. There's a mess to be cleaned up. But the real gift of Christmas, the thing that we cling to most of all, is Jesus Christ. Because he cleans up all of our messes. How blessed we are to have a God who loves us so much. He sent his one and only son into our world to become one of us that you and I can have light. We can walk this life 
anticipating something far better. May each of us, even when things seem dark, when they seem dismal, may we look to Jesus Christ and in him we'll find our light. Amen. Our Father in heaven, we come unto you in this evening and we thank you for the gift of salvation in Jesus Christ, the one who was willing to become human, to be born as a baby in the humblest of places, to die the cruelest of deaths, that we may have life. Lord, may we always look to you. Lord, may we say, as the songwriter wrote, I saw the light. I saw the light, no more darkness, no more night. Once I was a blind man, but praise the Lord, we can see the light. And how amazing is your grace given to us that we who are blind can see because you turned a world of darkness into light for all who believe. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks. Amen. Be my solemn vow to 
take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Thank you. And for our last song, we sing, not our last song, but we now turn to 267, and we'll sing, I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. It's a song that was written by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Following the death of his wife, she was burned, and her dress caught on fire, and his son was killed in the Civil War. And on Christmas Day, he heard the bells, and this is the song he wrote. stand for our benediction. For our benediction, we again turn to the Gospel of John, chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life. And that life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. Amen.
each of you for coming this evening, and may each of you have a blessed Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. For singing and very good. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Robert. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you for the message. You're welcome. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Greg. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.